Thank you for downloading this podcast from Emmanuel Church Lurgan. At Emmanuel, our vision is to help rewrite the story of Craigavon, Ireland and the nations with the good news of the Kingdom of God. We hope you enjoy listening to this message. It's great um, with the, the new hosting team which we're having. It's just such a such a blessing and a gift to the church to see other people being able to just step up in their giftings uh, and the anointings that's upon them. Um, yeah, so Claire, Claire's reference there this morning, we are praying for Phil. We've sent the message around uh, all life groups this morning and um, just through some of our other leaders as well. Um, I was speaking to him and Lorraine this morning. Lorraine had been messaging just to say he, Daniel, uh, had, had COVID during the week. Phil, just yesterday afternoon, started to feel very unwell and has uh, just had a really uh, tough night just with his breathing and different things as well. So listen, this isn't a fear narrative, but we just believe in faith for him, for full healing. And so Phil, we love you this morning. Uh, and uh, yeah, as Claire's already prayed, we just believe in full healing over your body uh, in Jesus' name. And so let's, let's stand with them today as a family. Let's continue to pray and to lift them up. And yeah, isn't it great that we have Jesus to be able to pray to? Uh, in these things, isn't it? And, uh, and so, Phil, we love how you pray and stand with us and lead us as a church family. And so we're just with you right now, even as you're, you're watching and everything that's happening today. So today, we, as we press into um, our, our theme of advance, um, where we've been over the last few weeks, um, all beginning with the letter M's, because apparently that's what we need to do, all begin with the same letter. Um, but as we were looking around the posture about how we move forward in terms of the kingdom of God and what it means for us to step forward and to advance in this mindset, last week we looked about the mission of the kingdom of God. We recognized that Jesus had come and he had demonstrated something in his life that was significant for us, not just to look back on and to reflect on his terms of nice wee stories, but for us to learn and to embody and to recognize that this was a mandate for us to step into as the church and in Jesus' life, we looked significantly. So last week I taught him from Matthew 4 and Matthew 9. We looked about how in Matthew 4 there was this reference. So when it came to the outworking of the kingdom of God that Jesus had come to fulfill, there was this phrase in this verse that said that he, he moved throughout the towns and the villages. He taught, he proclaimed the kingdom, he was healing, he was delivering. And we, we looked about how Matthew says this. And then in Matthew chapter 9, he repeats the exact same thing. So it was almost like a bookend. Just There was something significant for us to recognize. This is what the kingdom of heaven is like. This is what it means in terms of moving forward with it. And then in Matthew 5 to 7, we see Jesus teaching and the Sermon on the Mount and the Beatitudes. Matthew 8 to 9, we see some of the demonstration and the signs and wonders. And then Matthew reminds us again, this is what the kingdom of heaven is like. Jesus went throughout the towns in the villages. You know, one of the key things we did say, though, was that the thing that set Jesus apart in terms of what was happening around him and some of the teachers and some of the other things in culture and their understanding of it was that Jesus came and every bit of this was laid on a foundation of love. It's what set it apart. I, we referenced that verse last week in 1 Corinthians 13, which is read so often at weddings, you know, that, that, that this is what love looks like. You know, if we speak with the tongues of angels and all the different things, there's lots of different things we could desire to do, but if it's not flowing out of this place of love, it's just not kingdom. And Jesus came and revealed this to us. He came and showed and revealed. And the, the beautiful thing, and this is where we come today to pick this up, was that Jesus just didn't come to say, right, but this is what it's like, but he actually empowered and equipped each and every one of his followers. And we're going to reflect on this verse again. Where we didn't get to last week, because I did what I usually did, and I went off a bit of a tangent from my notes, and there was one thing that we wanted to land in that almost set up today and where we were getting to. There was this phrase that, what we see in terms of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God advances through authority. Today, this is the main thing we want to speak about is kingdom authority. It's why we've been singing this morning about kingdom authority. But the truth of these words, the kingdom of God advances through authority. Sometimes we can think that it's all to do with our strategy or our programs or the being able to do things in good ways. It's not to do with good ideas or just slick services. This is a truth that we need to speak. And this, even for us in our lives, the kingdom of God only advances through authority. And so this, this is the topic for today, authority. The beautiful thing about this is that 
listen, I have stacks of scriptures littered down here on the page. Lots of different things to speak about. But the beautiful thing is that next week, Rick is coming to share in this as well. So I don't actually have to get through all of this today, which is nice. Um, he can pick up from some of the places we don't get to. And next week, we really want to pray an impartation for all of us, particularly around this area, around authority, a fresh measure of it that, that we carry. So I can leave out all the awkward bits and let Rick cover that next week. What about that? Can we do that? Where we begin our reflections so on this in the Kingdom Authority a couple of years ago with one of, our, one of our themes that we were in and we were looking at, we reflected on the truth of this verse uh, from Romans chapter 8. You know, in the life of Jesus, what we often see again as we look back and we reflect on the, 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 the majesty of his presence, the kingly authority that he had. I love this verse in Romans chapter 8, which we use for that series at that stage. And this was from the message version. Let's read it together. God knew what he was doing from the very beginning. He decided from the outset to shape the lives of those who love him along the same lines as the life of his son. The son stands first in the line of humanity he restored. We see the original and intended shape of our lives there in him. I know the word's beautiful. <laughs> And so powerful. Listen to what that's underlined. The Son stands first in the line of humanity. He restored. This is why we've been singing about the significance of the cross. Today we're going to be reflecting on the God story and seeing the restoration and redemption that Jesus has brought about for us. But this is what it's about. It's not just about getting the ticket to heaven, but it's about restoring and releasing us into all that the kingdom of heaven was to be about for us in our lives. The Son stands first in the line of humanity. He restored. We see the original and intended shape of our lives there. And him, you see, when we have an understanding of that, it changes how we read the Gospels. <laughs> Do you recognize that when you read the Gospels, this is one of the things we've been teaching even in Grove over the last couple of weeks, when you, when you read the Gospels, it's not just because it's, it's great to be able to reflect on the stories of Jesus, but there, when we see and when we reflect on how Jesus conducted himself when he went about his life, it's there we see who we were actually intended to be as humanity. Because put simply, it's this, our original design was to be like Jesus. Imagine that. The original purpose and design for humanity was to be like what we see in Jesus. Some people, when they hear that, might think, well, that sounds a bit blasphemous. But get this in their heads, and this is where we want to reflect today. The original design for all of humanity, for all of creation, for everybody who was made in the image of God was to be like Jesus. Jesus comes and reveals the original and intended shape of our lives there in him. Last week... Before we start into this a bit today, last week I shared on what I sensed God was calling and leading us to engage with. Um, the word that I really felt for us as a church, I believe it in the church widely speaking, but I feel for us as a church here in Emmanuel, one of the things that I feel is a stepping moment for us is that we're being called to be a Joshua generation. Send us direct during the week. I feel actually this is one of the things that we need to almost hang over everything at the minute. We need to step into the calling of what it is to be a Joshua generation. In Joshua chapter 1, there's this reality where God speaks to Joshua and says, Moses, the Lord's servant, was dead. And actually what he now calls is that it's not just about a change of, of leadership, but it's actually a change of ways. It's a change of ways. No longer it's just about following just Moses and Moses outworking. But now through Joshua, what's happening is there's a calling up of all the people. There's a calling up of all the people for the sole purpose of taking the land. And last week, the phrase that we looked at time and time again was these words, as far as. There was a call to go as far as. This is a faith mindset. It's not simply that we're just trying to play things simple and safe in just small ways. But we're saying, saying God... We believe that we can go as far as, and so what we were just believing was what we were saying in your life. For us as the church, what do we believe in faith that we could go as far as? Joshua was told to bring the people from a place as far as something. And what we're saying from where we're at right now as the people of God here in a family in Emmanuel Lurgan, where do we believe that God could take us as far as? Do we believe that God could take us as far as some of the things we had declared even over the last few years for even for a thousand lives? Do we believe that we could see God break out in salvation in our town? Do we believe for our town and our area that we would see restoration 
and wholeness of living and life for people around us? Do we believe that this area and this community could go as far? What? Sometimes in our heads we play it safe, but yet the call upon a Joshua generation is that we as a people would go as far as in you and your life and in your family and your business and your education and some of the different things that are around you. Let's not play it safe and simple. We need, as the people of God need to believe in faith and with the faith mindset we are going as far as. What does as far as look like? And Joshua finishes the book of Joshua with these words in Joshua 24, one of the final things, Joshua restores and calls the people to renew the covenant. And it says these words, but if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates? Or will it be the gods, the Amorites, in whose land you now live? But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. I reflected on this with staff a couple of weeks ago. You know, one of the things that's really easy to do Yes, in leadership, but for us in our lives, it's really easy to know things in our head. And sometimes, even as we speak to people and to be able to speak truth to other people, this is what God would really love for you. This would be a great thing that we believe in God for you. It's really good to know it in our head and to be able to speak it out. But what Joshua is saying is actually there's responsibility for us, firstly, to choose it for ourselves. He's saying, choose this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And there's a call for each and every one of us in this moment. There's a calling up in terms of what it is for us to advance, in terms of our commitment to our discipleship, how we invest and commit ourselves together to each other and to advance in our calling as the church of Jesus Christ. And so with that today, when it comes to this idea of authority, this is how we move forward, is under and with the authority of King Jesus. And today, when we look at this idea of authority, just three things Mainly we're going to spend our time on, I'll reflect just briefly on a couple of things at the end, but three things just to say, in terms of what we learn from the God story, some of this might not just be new information for you, but today it's almost like, let's pull this all together, let's frame this in terms of our understanding, what is the authority that we actually have in the name of Jesus? And from the God story, three things I just really want to spend our time looking at, mainly this morning. We're going to reflect on delegated authority, the original design upon humanity, we're going to look at the abdicated authority, what happened as a result of sin and the fall. And then we're going to look at restored authority, the plan and the fulfillment of salvation that comes from each and, or for each and every one of us. So Holy Spirit, help us. Give us ears to hear what you're saying this morning. First thing around delegated authority or original design. You, you all have, I'm sure, have read the story of creation, right? We know this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We know the story of creation, and in the six days, as God creates, in the seventh day, he rests. And in day six, he creates what's, what, what is the pinnacle of his creation. He creates the masterpiece of everything, which is humanity. And God speaks these words, let us make mankind in our image, image bearers of God. The Hebrew word for image bearer, or in that reference, is this word, salem. It was the same word that was used of an image or a statue. It, it, was, it was like almost what an idol would be. I'm sure if you've been around other places in the world, you see idols. You even see it even here in our own country. You would see idols that would be placed outside different homes in different ways. An idol is a visible representation of an invisible being. That's what an idol is. It's, an, it's a visible representation of an invisible being. And this is what God spoke over mankind. Let us make man in our image that they would be a visible representation of everything that is invisible for people to see. And immediately after being declared image bearers of God, then this was what was spoken over all of humanity. Listen to the language of these, of these words. Listen to the life in these words. Let's not again play this down, but listen to the fullness of everything that God spoke and declared over humanity. Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion. Do you see the mindset? These are advanced words. <laughs> this isn't about defending or retreating. This is advanced words. This is what was spoken over us as the people of God. Be fruitful. Multiply. Fill the earth. Subdue. That word subdue, sometimes it can be like almost sound like a real negative word, but that word for subdue was almost like to take the essence of raw materials and to draw beauty and order out of it. In, in Eden, which Eden wasn't a nice wee pretty garden, it was just lots and lots of just rugged things that were there, but it was like bring beauty and order out of this. This was the mandate that was upon all of humanity. Be fruitful, 
increase everything that you're carrying, multiply it around the earth. Through this, God was calling us as the people to see his kingdom ways start to be spread throughout the world. One, one Hebrew scholar says this around these words. So the, the word rada, what we see in this in terms of, de- of dominion is this word, sorry, it's this Hebrew word rada, which means to rule or to reign. One Hebrew scholar says that this is what it actively means, to actively partner with God in taking the world somewhere. Imagine this. So upon humanity, um, again, we've spoken this several times before over church, but imagine this was the original purpose for mankind. We look around at the brokenness in humanity around the world. The original purpose that God had for mankind was that there was a delegation of authority. Now, I don't know whose jumper this is. This was someone from the worship teams. So if it's not washed, I apologize. Right? It's, it's not mine. So here we go. But imagine this, and during, during um, a few weeks ago, I put on another garment. I'm not going to try and put this one on because the other one at that stage didn't fit me, and this one probably won't either. But imagine what happened with humanity. There was an authority that was given. There was an authority that was delegated. Now get this, God was not giving up authority. It wasn't as if God didn't have authority, but there was a sharing of it. There was a co-partnering with it. There was this is everything that God had, authority in heaven and on earth. And at this stage, what God does with humanity that he has created in his image, God delegates authority to him and says, take this and partner with me. Here on earth, take authority and use it to be able to bring fruitfulness and to multiply and to bring life and to bring beauty and to bring wholeness to everything that's around. This is the authority that we have. This is the authority that was given to humanity in the very beginning. God co-partnered with us to actively bring the world somewhere and to bring beauty and order. This was the design upon humanity. And then we know what happened in the fall. Um, Actually, let's read these verses, sorry. Don't take my words for it. Psalm 8, a couple of verses from the psalmist. Psalm 8, what is man that you're mindful of him? And the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion, this word dominion again, to do with authority, ruler, reign. You've given him a th- dominion over the works of your hands. and You have put all things under his feet, right? So with the authority that was given over hum- to humanity in an earthly realm, there was a right to be able to rule or to reign that was given to mankind. Isn't that, isn't that significant? <laughs> this was trusted. We were called to partner with God. Another verse from the Psalms. Psalm 115, the heavens are the Lord's heavens, but the earth he has given to the children of man. There was an authority that was delegated to be able to partner with God in this way. And then obviously we know what happened as a result of the fall. As a result of the fall, authority was abdicated and was submitted to the devil. What happened as a result of, it wasn't just about the devil coming and saying, tempting Adam and Eve to eat a piece of fruit and as a result of sin coming. But in this moment, what actually happened was there was a submitting of ourselves to another way. There was, because there was a command of God that had been spoken and the ways of God that had been spoken. And in this moment, as sin came into the world, there was God, we're not following your ways, but we're submitting to something different. And what happened at this moment was that the authority that had been delegated to us suddenly as a place of submission to ourselves because of what happened with the enemy, this was taken from us. And now as a result, humanity no longer had, and it's not as if it had stopped, listen to me. This was always God's design and purpose for humanity, and God's plans will always be fulfilled, right? And what happened, this hadn't stopped, but it had paused. Humanity suddenly no longer had this because the enemy had taken it. And this is where Jesus comes in the place of salvation and redemption. This is where we need to be clear in terms of what we recognize that Jesus was actually coming to redeem. So we know that the enemy's taking this. So in the temptation narrative in Matthew chapter 4, listen to the words that the devil, Lucifer, speaks to Jesus. Next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said. If you kneel down and you worship me, get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him. For the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. You see, the devil recognized one thing. Jesus had come to to take this back. And it was almost like in this way, the devil said to Jesus, he said, I'll give you what you want if you give me what I want. If you bow down and worship me, I'll give this back. 
And Jesus recognizes this one moment. He didn't need to panic or react because he knew the will of his Father. He knew the will of his Father had already been spoken and had already been declared. And as a result of what happened at the cross and what happened when we've just worshipped this morning, we recognize that there was a restored mindset of authority, the plan and fulfillment of salvation. In Genesis 3, 15, off the back of sin and coming into the world, and what we see at that moment, by the way, is that suddenly there's, there's a disorder that comes into culture, and there's a disorder that comes into the world, all as a result of the enemy's authority now that he had. Remember the John 10, 10 principle? The enemy's purpose is to steal, kill, destroy. That's how he uses his authority. How God uses his authority is to bring what? Fullness of life. The enemy's authority, how it's used is to steal, kill, and destroy. But what happened in Genesis 3.15 was that there was actually a prophetic word that was spoken about another that would come. The Messiah who would come. And this is what we read in Genesis 3.15. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. There was a promise that was spoken. The Messiah was coming and he would crush the enemy in all of his ways. Listen to what the prophets speak about the Messiah that's coming as well. In Isaiah 22, this is a prophetic word that's spoken again about the Messiah who would come. The key of the house of David, I will lay on his shoulder so he shall open and no one shall shut. Listen to the authority language in this that's spoken about Messiah. The keys of the house of David. He shall open and no one shall shut. And he will shut and no one shall open. I will fasten on him as a peg in a secure place. And he will become a glorious throne in his father's house. The Messiah would come with keys to lock and unlock. One who had authority. And see, with this, this is what we need to recognize. Remember at the beginning... Here's God with authority. God has authority in heaven and on earth. And he's delegated it to mankind. And Satan has come and as a result of the fall has removed, in terms of an earthly setting, has taken that away from humanity for a period. And what happened as a result of this? Remember, Satan, who had Satan taken authority from? It was from mankind. He hadn't taken it from God. God always has authority, right? God was never stopping in heaven and on earth. Satan had taken it from the original design and purpose of humanity. But this is what Jesus then came to take back and to restore once again to humanity. Jesus is Messiah who was coming with his authority. Listen to them what Jesus then speaks over his followers in Luke chapter 10. Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. And in Matthew chapter 28, in terms of the Great Commission, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Jesus, who was, yes, fully man, but he is fully God. Jesus, who is working under the power of the Holy Spirit, but is carrying the authority that comes from his Father in heaven. Jesus is all authority in heaven and on earth. And what Jesus is saying to humanity and to those who step into relationship and to those who follow him once again, and to those who are embedded in relationship and are saved because of his blood, Jesus says, take what is rightfully yours. Take what is rightfully yours and was always purposed for your life. Take the authority that you have as a kingdom follower. Take the authority that you have to advance everything that God wants in your earth. You see, the mandate is still there. Be fruitful and multiply. Fulfill everything that God has for us. This is what Jesus came to restore to humanity. And this is, this is, why, this is why we need not play it safe. Do you ever have sometimes in our heads, I don't know whether it's a Northern Irish thing, but we just, we just try to like play everything. Oh, you, I couldn't do that. Oh, not me. We just always try to play it down. And this was the length that Jesus went to for us as his church. This was the joy that was set before him that made him endure the cross, that we as his followers would be restored, yes, to relationship with God, restored to relationship with the Father. Yes, one day we would be in heaven with him and we would step into the fullness of that. But right now on earth, we get to step into everything that he originally intended and designed for us. Listen to what Paul says in the church in Rome. He says, for if by the trespass of one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace 
and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Listen to those words. Reign in life. (laughs) Yes, one day we will be in heaven and we will be with God. But right now in life, listen, there is something and there's a mandate and a call still for us as the church to advance. Get this into our heads. It's not just about a place for us to come on a Sunday. This is a calling and a way of life for us to get our heads and our beings around so that we can outwork everything that God desires to do on this earth for him. We are co-partners with God. Amazing responsibility. Huge responsibility. Sometimes that can feel really weighty and so people almost want to just, it's, we just want an easy life. God hasn't saved us for an easy life. God has saved us for a full life. Part of the full life that we have is by stepping into all who we were ever intended to be. Sometimes the reason why we don't experience fullness is because we don't, we, we don't, we don't claim it. For who we, this is what fullness of life looks like. This is, in this world, you will have trouble. Fullness of life isn't like a trouble-free life. But fullness of life is this, that we get and understand everything that we were intended to be. And we get to step into it. And in joy, we get to live it out. And as a result of it, people around us get to experience God and his goodness through our lives. Not because there's anything significant about us other than the fact that we carry his authority. This is why the line we just sang in the song, kingdom authority flows from his throne onto his own. And as a result of that, then his anthem reigns. Majesty, kingdom authority flows from his throne onto his own. For what reason? His anthem raised. There, there, there's a responsibility that we have. And so the advanced mindset for us as the church, and this is why next week we're going to, sorry for whoever's jumping on this, I'm throwing it about. Um, but th- th- this is why next week we really want to pray. We will today as well, but next week we really want to pray a release of this over us and our lives, that we would step into this and are recognizing that this is why we want to understand who we are, sons and daughters of God. This is why on a daily basis we want to, and listen, I'm saying this as someone that needs to get this into my head as well, because I recognize there's days I don't. But this is why on a daily basis we want to be people that just are centering ourselves in the love of the Father, recognizing what it is to be filled by the Holy Spirit, not to get into another tangent, because that's what I do, but this is what the call of all followers were, that we were to be those that carried power and authority. And on the Great Commission that we read in Matthew 28, Jesus has come and has given authority back at that moment. It's actually, it's actually really important to know this, but everything up to that point, anytime Jesus sent out followers, he sent them out with power and authority. They had an authority and a right to be able to go out and to do all these things, but yet they needed power and the Holy Spirit would come upon it. But yet Jesus in the Great Commission just sends his followers out with authority, not with power. He sends them out with authority, but he tells them to wait. He gives them authority and he says, now now wait, don't just run ahead. Don't just try to get on with what you think you should do. Do you ever do that sometimes? (laughs) Trying to work it out in the way that we think we should do. Jesus says, here's the authority, but wait, wait, wait upon the Lord. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength wait upon the Lord. And in this place of waiting, what we see in Acts chapter 2 in the day of Pentecost, suddenly the church is is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. The church who have the authority that they're carrying and now that are filled with power, we are those that move forward in this way. In Acts chapter 19, let me just say a few more things and then we'll we'll round this up and the guys are going to come and sing for us. But in Acts chapter 19, see, this is why authority is important for us. It's so easy, let me say this before we read this passage, it's so easy to play a church. It's so easy to play a church. It's so easy to go through the motions of what we think it should be like and what we should do. I recognize this in my life, it's so easy just to, and it can be the easiest thing to put on a pretense, can't it? Again, it can be an easiest thing to be a speaker of truth to other people rather than a liver of truth in our own lives. And yet what we see in this, in Acts chapter 19, so this is around how the church was in Ephesus. And in Acts chapter 19, we have this, this verse. It makes me laugh sometimes. Well, it doesn't really make me laugh, sorry. But 
it gives you an understanding of what's going on in this. Listen what happens. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of Jesus. So people had got this understanding. They saw evil spirits being driven out in Jesus' name, right? Because there's an authority in Jesus' name. And they thought, wow, that's amazing. Would love to be able to do something like that. Would love to be able to just get caught up in what this is all about because it just seemed like a really cool thing to be able to do. It felt like in terms of the emotions of it all, it felt really class and really significant. And yet they hadn't gone through the actual motions of what it was to step into kingdom authority. Kingdom authority flows from the throne onto who? Onto his own people. Those who are redeemed and restored, those who have been bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, those that are saved for eternity, those that have entered into relationship with God as Father, flows from his throne onto his own. And see, what we see in this is so, so easily what often happens. These people thought, oh, well, that's a class thing. We're going to try that. You see, kingdom, this advances by authority, not by program or strategy or good thoughts or ideas. And these people, they just move forward in their own ways. Let's read it. Some Jews who went out driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. The seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. One day, the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I know about, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped in them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. You see, the only thing that could come against the evil spirits was people who were carrying and working out of a place of authority. This is to do with rights, legal rights. And as those who are part of the kingdom of God, we have a right now, not in our own ways, not in our own ability, not because there's anything significant about us, but because we are those that operate and do everything in the name of Jesus. There's an authority that has been given to us. Jesus has delegated authority to us. And because we move in the name of Jesus, that's why this morning as we pray for Phil and we pray for healing, we're praying in the name of Jesus. There's an authority that's been given to us. And when we try to operate outside of that, we operate outside of the remit of everything that this was designed to be about. That's why, that's why we need to recognize that as we advance, God has given us everything that we need to do this. When we talk about moving forward in our lives, and so even last week when we talk about that saying, as far as what? I don't know about you, but sometimes there can be a fear sometimes in our minds. There can be a, I don't know if we could do that. I don't know, God, if, if I could actually believe for that. In our own ways, we probably can't. But this is why we need to recognize what we carry, whose we are, and what we have in the name of Jesus. We have authority that has been given to us and entrusted to us by our Father. And, and as Holly and the guys come, guys, can you come up and we'll, we'll sing and we'll pray. Just, just two things just to say in this briefly. And then Rick can pick up on all the rest of this next week. But you know, what, what has happened, and when it comes to this idea of authority, where we've got it wrong is because of what we've seen in the world. I don't know about you, but sometimes we've seen authority used in completely the wrong way, haven't we? Yep. We've seen people just operate out of a place. Like, so this is what the, I looked up a definition of authority last night. This is what uh, it's, Google tells me authority is. Authority, the power or right to give orders, <laughs> make decisions, and enforce obedience. <laughs> right, th this is what the world sees authority as. The power or right to give orders, make decisions, and enforce obedience. And sometimes because this has been our understanding of authority and what it's like, this is why we have a warped authority about what it actually means for us to carry authority in the name of Jesus. We think that then... It can almost be in this way that we're going to be those that give orders. That we're going to be those that enforce obedience or decisions. You know what? Sometimes over the years, the church has got it completely wrong. Because they've operated out of a place rather than carrying kingdom authority. They've operated out of a mindset of worldly authority. They've tried to enforce. They've tried to force things upon people. They've tried to take things. One of the ways that I would say this, just as we finish. And 
I had actually hadn't really planned to say this. I mean, one of the ways where this has been so easily damaged and has gone wrong in the past is even how in the church we viewed women. Sometimes because of the topic of yes, authority and headship, which we'll not get into right now because we could go into a big teaching that, but because of what people have read, there's almost been a there's almost been a putting down of other people in a place of authority in terms of our idea of this the power or right to give orders or make decisions and enforce obedience. What has often happened in the church over the years is that men have felt that they are the ones that give orders to women that enforce obedience over women, not just in the church, but in the home and in different parts of culture and society. This has been how sometimes men have viewed women. And yet we are those that are all now one in Christ Jesus. Paul would say this, there's no longer any separation between male or, fail, or male or female, slave or free, Jew or Gentile. We're all one in Christ Jesus. And because of this, we need to recognize that there's an authority that all of us carry together, men and women. We need to recognize that this is our call upon the church for all of us in terms of a place of true equality. And so you need to hear this today, that this is what we believe for each and every person in this gathering. For each and every person, regardless of your age, regardless of your gender, regardless of your background, regardless of your story of where you've come from and all the different things and all that, that you might even be going through in your life. I believe fully in the name of Jesus that this is available for each and every one of us if we would just reach out and receive it. This is the authority that we carry. And so next week, this is why in terms of just laying a foundation for this, this is why next week, I would just love for you to come. Next week, Rick, Rick will share just a little bit at the beginning of this, but next week, we just really love to pray for a release of that amongst us, just a stepping in and st stepping up into this as the people of God. That in terms of this mindset of believing that we could go as far as, not on our own ability, on our own strength, but recognizing we are the children of God. We are those that have been created in his image. We are those that he has delegated and entrusted authority to. That now Jesus, because of his salvation, has released and, and enabled us to step into this once again. And this is on our call. This is our time to step up and to see the kingdom of God move forward. And so I would love for us just to sing this song just as a declaration over ourselves and truth, even over our weeks and over our days today. Just this song, Majesty, again. I would love us to just worship Jesus because reality is none of this is possible without him, right? This is all because of who he is. This is all because of what he has dreamed for us. This is all the joy that was set before him again that made him endure the cross. And so this morning, I would just love for us to stand and declare us again, majesty, worship the majesty. The kingdom authority flows from his throne onto his own. And as a result of that, his anthem raised. This is why we want to worship this morning. We have a reason to sing, don't we? We have a reason to worship. We have a reason why, yes, why there's lots of troubles that we can have in our lives. There's a reason why we have a joy to sing in this life. We're part of the church of Jesus. We're part of his church and the joy that we have. And so just stand with me this morning and let's sing this. And then we're just going to pray and close and just entrust ourselves to the Lord this week. Thanks all. We hope you enjoyed listening to this podcast. For more information about our church and all that we do, please visit our website at emmanuel-church.co.uk.